He's one of the greatest of all time, and that's one of the many reasons why uh, Coca-Cola Zero Sugar decided to reach out to him to take part in the Debate the Goatness campaign in courtesy of that product. Joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show, Basketball Hall of Famer Julius Irving. How are you, sir? Rich, I'm doing I'm doing very, very good, man. So nice to hear you, boys. Same to you. Same to you. Uh, did you catch any of the uh, basketball action over the weekend, Dr. J? I was there. I was there, man. I was I was I was over in the bleachers. Actually, we were in the Coca Cola Zero Suite. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, so, what did you think of that game? Time. What did you? Th- I, 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 I'm sorry to say that because I know again you're a Philly, uh, you know, guy, yeah. and I know Villanova and Kansas played, but I still can't get over what I saw between Carolina and Duke, Julius. Yeah. No, that was that was just amazing from start to finish and. <laughs> you can imagine these guys. I mean, they go at it, and they have such a history. And, and they, when you look at the stats, historically, it's like 50, in, well, at least in, in, um, in Coach K's career, it's 50 wins and 49 losses. It's, it's put, The point differential is maybe less than 100 in, in 100 games. And, uh, you know, the rivalry lived up to – through the hype, or once, right? Yeah, right. I mean, how many times does some? But you know, you talk about something and you look forward to it, and it lives up to it, and it, yeah. and it, uh, it, um, you know, surpasses your expectation level. That that truly was yeah. something else. Um, so back in the day, uh, Doctor J, how did you get to UMass? Why and how? How did that happen? Well, it Back was the at the end of the day, you know, I did visit some schools. I visited Iowa State, and that was as far west as I went. I went south for a minute, and, you know, I, where did I go down there? I can't even remember. But that was kind of eliminated very quickly. And then it kind of came down to St. John's or UMass. So, you know, stay home in New York and go to St. John's or get away and, you know, two and a half hours up the highway and, and go to UMass, and I, I really fell in love with the, uh, you know, the big campus atmosphere and the, the whole college experience and just kind of getting away with New York when New York was always close enough because New York was my home base uh, or whatever. And I think I made the right decision for me because coming out of high school, I, you know, I did stretch up to 6'4". By the time I graduated, and I was about 165 pounds, uh, and when I got to college, you know, I grew a couple inches and, and gained weight, and I, I was able to develop my basketball game in a timely fashion without being pushed, without without it being rushed, and uh, and it had the staying power of uh, something that was developed through time uh, instead of an overnight success story. So that's how I got there, and my relationship between myself and my coach Jack Lehman. Uh, stemmed from he and my high school coach going to Boston University together and playing basketball at BU uh, together. And, you know, sometimes relationships are the best judge in terms of making a decision like that because, you know, if you go with somebody who has a relationship with your guy or your parent or whatever, you, you're going to be placed in good hands and, and – uh, in sport and just you against the world. I've got Julius Irving, basketball Hall of Famer, here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm, I, I, I don't believe I've ever asked you this question, and uh, you know I'm sure you've been asked it. Who's the first one to call you Doctor J? How did you get that nickname? Well, I, I wasn't called Doctor J, actually, until I, I became a pro. Before that, it was just the doctor, <laughs> and. And I had a buddy who I called the professor, and he called me the doctor. And and we we graduated high school together. We we went to the same college. And as a matter of fact, I'm gonna play golf with him this afternoon. I'm gonna play with the professor. <laughs> and, and so it's funny that you would ask that question. Uh, when I got to when I got to Virginia, in my first year uh, as a rookie, our trainer, you know, he called. Called everybody Doc, <laughs> so, so so I had the nickname, and he called the team position the Doc. He called one of his other buddies the Doc. So he said, "Well, you gotta be Doctor J." 
because we got too many doctors around here. So you gonna be Doctor J, and then they started advertising the Virginia Squires featuring Charlie the Great Scott and Julius Doctor J Irving, and that was the first time I ever saw it written out, Doctor J. <laughs> and and uh, there was no looking back after that. Doctor J. So have you ever received like an honorary doctorate in places where you are legitimately I, Dr. J. Julius I, Irving? I have, I have from, uh, from uh, Temple University. I uh, have an honorary doctorate uh, from there. And I have two others. <laughs> uh, so See, so I, I, honorary, I'm an honorary <laughs> doctorate. I'm, I'd like to have a doctorate of humane letters, believe it or not. <laughs> Four times over, huh? So, uh, who was the who was the um, the best player when you arrived, and then when you left basketball? When you first got into the ABA, who was the best player? Not not named you. And then when yeah. you departed the NBA, who was the best player? Let's start with the the first one, yeah. Doctor J. So the first one, when I, when I got into uh, the ABA, you know, Artis Gilmore was the MVP and the Rookie of the Year. So he went right to the head of the class. Mm-hmm. Of course, there was, you know, I mean, there were great players there. George McGinnis was was great. David Thompson, uh, you know, he came in afterwards. But um, but Artis Gilmore, I mean, he was a force to be reckoned with. And how he's not in the top seventy-five. I mean, that, that questions the legitimacy of the top 75. You don't have Artis Gilmore in there. He's the, the leading field goal percentage shooter in the history of the NBA. And he was he was just, I mean, I, it hurts me because he's one of my ABA brothers. Mm. When I left, uh, well, you know, Michael was, Michael was surging at the time because uh, he came in three years behind me. So my first, my last three years were his first three years. So he was surging, but I would still give the nod to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Hmm. You know, that I left, he, he stayed and played another year or another two years after I left. And so it was probably Gilmore on the front end and Abdul-Jabbar on the back end. Yeah, Kareem, right? I mean, and, and now here we are, LeBron is... You know, closing in, right, uh, on the all-time points record right now. So, you know, what 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 is your thoughts on LeBron James and where he rests uh, on on the well, all-time conversation, well, the goatness, if you will, yeah, Doctor J? The goatness. <laughs> he's 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 gonna he's gonna pass everybody for one thing because you know he comes in at 18 years old and he was he was. A pro, he had the pro body and the pro ability as a high schooler. You know, I I really haven't seen anybody have that package. Moses, Moses, probably raw. He's probably the closest guy. And there was Bill Willoughby, who it didn't work out for. And there were some other guys who go up, Kevin Garnett, you know, but he's not LeBron and he's not Moses. So. Uh, so LeBron is, yes, the chosen one in that regard, you know, from he's going to play into his forties and he's going to start at 18 and he's going to have, you know, he's probably going to have a 22, 23 year career. And, and nobody's done that in basketball either. Uh, because those last few years for Shaq and for Kobe, you know, they were, they were on the bench. They were on the sidelines. They were they were there. They were getting paid, but they were on the sidelines. They were done. Uh, LeBron, it won't be the same for him because he can still be that complete player. His skills are so diverse, and his you know he's putting a million dollars into his body every offseason <laughs> to, to be able to still be out there with the with the tonal machine and and uh, the uh, you know stuff that legitimately. You know, it's going to help him maintain his uh, physicality. So, yeah, he's going to be the guy at the at the end of the day. He's going to be the guy who reestablishes the bar for what the goat is. 
Julia Serving, Dr. J here on the Rich Eisen Show, courtesy of Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and the debate, the Goatness campaign. Uh, one of the commercials for it was you and Joel Embiid. Uh, what do you make of the Sixers' chances to bring a championship to Philadelphia for the first time since your days, Dr. J? I think they're going to surprise everybody. Uh, right now, you know, they've been – played with some inconsistency in terms of finishing games against teams that they're supposed to beat. But I think they're going to surprise everybody because somehow the bench needs to get a wake-up call. I mean, you can't play play guys coming off the bench who play for two quarters and don't score. Um, so hopefully the protest is over, whatever the protest was, because that sounded like a mutiny on the bounty. Uh, when I heard that, I'm like, well, something's wrong. I got to get up there and get in that locker room <laughs> because these guys, you know, they're getting paid and, and, uh, and, and they're, you know, they need to be productive for the team to be successful. So you get to just have a great start and five and no bench. So right now uh, they need to fix that and they got about a week or two to do it. Well, I mean, Doc's called them out, right? I mean, <clears throat> and – because the team's only, you know, a couple games over 500 since Harden's been there. Do you think they can, in fact, kick it into another gear in in the playoffs, Doctor John? I, I hope so. I hope so. But I don't think it. I don't think it rests with the starters. I think it rests with the, you know, down the line that you got to get eight guys and you got to get nine guys you know, out of the 12. And then if anybody gets hurt, it's the next man up, and, and he's got to be productive. So. Uh, yeah, you need you need some depth to go deep, and it's not showing right now. But maybe they get lucky. Okay, uh, in your debate, the goatness campaign. Um, one of the guys who I would definitely debate is one of the greats of all time, is Moses Malone. You got a good story, one you could share with me? Oh uh, man, come on, you know, oh, got first got to Philly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he was used to riding around in Houston with his top down and leave himself in his car. And then he got to Philly. He, he pulled in <laughs> and he left his dry cleaning in his car. And he came back out and the dry cleaning was gone, right? So he said, when do I see this guy wearing my clothes? I'm going to break his neck. <laughs> he, had these, he had these shirts with the big collars on them, you know, the big flappy collars on them. And he had some uh, bell-bottom pads or something that were there. And he was so hurt, man. He was like, and I said, Bo, welcome to Philly. You can't, this ain't Houston. You cannot do that here. <laughs> I just loved, you know, obviously his all time great uh, quote of uh, how many times, you know, winning at foe, foe, and foe. Were you around for that one? Were you nearby his locker or anything like that? Or how you heard that, yeah. Dr. J? Yeah. Well, he was serious because he says, what is that? They said, what is it? the championship? He said, we got to go four, four, and four, you know, beating the, the, the three series. So, but it came out like four, 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 because, you know, he didn't really like talking to the media. And, uh, you know, he'd, he'd give him two minutes, and then that's it. He's all right, I'm done. Uh, so he's very quick with his wit, and he's quick with his, you know, his puns. And, and when he said four, 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 and we ended up, you know, playing 12, uh, 13 games instead of 12, or whatever, and that was history. That was that was a piece of history because uh, I think one of the groups in Philly, you know, made a song out of it. <laughs> who could who could play with the you guys today in today's game, where you know um, where you see somebody who's suiting up today? You know what that yeah, guy well, could have played well, with me on the Sixers or anything like that. You got one? Yeah, well, well. If it was the other way around, I'd take Andrew Tony and then I'd sit him out there and let him and Steph Curry shoot those jumpers stepping over half court because that that was Andrew. <laughs> Andrew showed us that in his game. Mm, uh, you know, LeBron could play. Kevin Garnett could play. I'm um, not Kevin Garnett. Uh, Kevin uh, Durant mm. uh, could play. Curry could play. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you think of Morant? Dr. Yeah, J, Morant, what do you think of him? Morant could play, could play in any era. <laughs> right? He's, he, he's just amazing. And then the big guys, I mean, you know, with uh, Jokic and Embiid and, and, and uh, you know, the the, uh, the, the kid in um, 
in Utah, defensive Yeah, player. Gobert. Yeah, Gobert. For sure. Gobert, you know, they, they would be good fits. Who's your MVP for this year then, before I let you go on your day? Who you? Because it's so close. You know, Jokic had a great weekend. Giannis had an incredible week last week. And Embiid, you know, with everything yeah. that happened with Ben Simmons, kept things on the straight and narrow. And the Sixers are, as you pointed yeah. out earlier, can uh, can make a run. What do you think? I, I'm hopeful that uh, Embiid wins it. Because, you know, because he does talk about it. And it's, and it's something that, you know, it's one of those carrots out there that he's reaching for. But I think the most deserving guy is Jokic. Uh, he hasn't missed any games, and you know, night in and night out, and he's he's done he did better than he did last year. So he was MVP last year. <laughs> and when you get better, I don't think you lose status. Uh, not if it's a fair if it's a fair fight. But I'm going to pull for Embiid because he's my guy. And and the Takupo, who knows how he's going to finish up. But both he and both Embiid and, and the Takupo have, have missed several weeks of play Jokic has been out there every night you know he is what he is well everybody check out the uh, debate the goatness campaign it is the next chapter of the best coke ever global campaign from last year and um, you know I appreciate the time with you Dr. J always oh that's good to talk to you stay well absolutely you too that's the all time great Julius Irving right here on the Rich Eisen show Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.